Hi guys, so we are at um, page 240 of Trail Guide to the Body. We're presenting muscles of the head, neck, and face. Uh, looking at the image here, um, we can see here all the muscles, right? So um, information here, so the head and face contain over 30 pairs of muscles. Okay, so many of which are small, thin, and difficult to isolate. Okay, so nevertheless, the several, the several muscles that act upon the mandible are easily accessible on the side of the jaw. So the anterior and lateral neck muscles perform a wide variety of tasks, including moving the head and neck, assistance in swallowing and raising the ribcage during inhalation. So the posterior neck muscles, which act uh, primarily upon the cervical spine and head, are detailed in Chapter 4, Spine and thorax okay which we have uh, actually covered okay so before you palpate the following muscles on your partner you are advised to skip the back of this chapter to fam to familiarize uh, yourself with the arteries um glands and nerves of the head neck and face okay so we're gonna um uh, identify all the muscles so we have here the frontalis okay and of course the temporalis here you know, this feels good uh, massaging if you have a headache. And we do have the galea aproneurotica. This is a, a more so connective tissue. Okay, and we have the occipitalis here. Okay, this one here, usually if there's a bump, you wanted to do a release in that um, muscle here in that area. And of course, we do have here the psychobatic arch. Okay, that's uh, a very um, important lawn marking. And of course, uh, the masseter. Okay, the masseter is a very strong muscle usually. And um, as a therapist, we know that if we're, we are um, to deal with, um, you know, some oral uh, massage, right? We're going to make sure um, that we do know the history of the client um, because they, if they do tend to have an epileptic um you know, attack during the massage um it it is really important because you're gonna have to go inside um to release that why masseter how many times do we chew a day masseters are very very strong muscles and it can really really um to be honest um if a person um is having in the table is having a um, epileptic um attack uh, if you're uh, as a therapist, if your finger is inside, um, there's a chance that it could actually cut that finger. That's how strong this master is. Okay, just an FYI. So um, we have that mastoid process, right? That is the um, the sort of cleidomastoid um, insertion. Okay, so and we do have the digastric, right? We do have the posterior belly because we do know that we also have the anterior belly portion of digastric, okay? So you can see that, you know, um, this is a very, it's like, a, uh, how do you call this muscle? It's like a very, it's, it's like a sling muscle, right? Um, digastric, a very, very important muscle. And we also have the stylohyoid uh, muscle here. And of course, the splenius capitis here, and of course, the, the, the one that elevates the scapula, levator scapula, and we have the more, more so popular trapezius. Why is it popular? Um, trapezius is an area where everybody wants to get um, a massage, right? Trapezius is actually an important muscle. Um, trapezius has three innervations. Trapezius has three muscle, uh, muscle fiber directions. And trapezius has three different actions and movements. And in fact, trapezius is actually an antagonist to each other. Why? Because the upper trapezius, lower trapezius, and middle trapezius has different fiber direction and different movement. As we all know that uh, muscles contract and shorten and it pulls, but it does not push. So the other antagonist, the other opposing muscle will have to be doing the pulling so that the muscle that was used for the contracting or movement can be able to relax. Okay, so going uh, back to the posterior scalin here, and we also have the middle scalin here, and an anterior scalin here. Okay, so, and we have the omohyoid, uh, omohyoid muscles, the, okay, the inferior belly, 
and we have again the higher bone here as you can see it's only attachment is that um a style of hyoid right and of course that connective tissue that's up for the anterior belly of the digastric okay on the lower portion we have the thyrohyoid okay and we have the omohyoid the super uh superior belly uh, again this is the lateral view okay i'm gonna show you the uh, the other view and we have the sternohyoid and the sternothyroid Okay, so like it, it's very self-explanatory because um, it states where is it attached, okay? And of course, the SCM or um, short for sternocleidomastoid. Okay, sternocleidomastoid is in fact a very uh, self-explanatory muscle because the insertion and origin it states where sternoid is the sternum, cleidoid, clavicle, Another word for clavicle and mastoid process is the insertion. Okay, I'll see you guys at page um, 241.